I'll be doing Sarah Bailey's um, claim of fact speech. I'll be replicating her speech on how Franklin, Franklin D. Roosevelt fell to effectively end the Great Depression. So as she mentioned, um, he was the 32nd uh, president. And the depression lasted from 1929 to 1939. So um, <coughs> Sarah's claims were one, that FDR overtaxed Americans, two, the New Deal was a failure, and three, FDR devalued the dollar by confiscating the US citizen's home. So um, my response to the first claim is that I agree that FDR did raise the taxes, but um, some of her information is complete or are complete. So she starts supports the claim by saying that income taxes were raised for wealthy Americans to create massive um, government job programs and to lower the high unemployment rate. Um, but according to Joseph uh, J. Turndyk from Tax Analysis on November 20th, 2008, in 1935, Treasury lawyers gave Roosevelt detailed evidence that rich Americans were su successfully avoiding much of their um, tax burden. So that means that none of the money that were given or that was supposed to go to programs weren't even going to the programs that needed the money, um, which increased the um, bad economy. So um, my response to the second claim that the New Deal was a failure. Although she has an excellent claim for that, um, some points give partial information. She mentions that many jobs created um, for the New Deal were temporary, but many of the jobs that, that were created back then are we still have them today. According to Ann Davis from Sydney Morning Herald on January 9, 2010 states that FDR transformed the United States of America with a New Deal bill on, social, on public works and social security. So the social security system benefits us when we retire. Um, another example is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation that makes sure if banks were to ever close, we would get our uh, money back from our checkings and savings. So her other, her other point um, was the New Deal backlash. Although some information might be true, um, the same source that she used also mentions how the economy kept growing. Yes, unemployment did rise about 5%, but Kimberly Yamadeo from The Balance on July 6, 2017 also mentions that FDR launched the first New Deal. Um, the economy grew 10.8% when the New Deal first started. When the second deal rolled out, the economy grew 8.9% in 1935 and 12.9% in 1937. So um, when that happens, the, when the economy grows, Unemployment is supposed to go down, but since there wasn't enough labor productivity, that um, that's what caused the Great Depression to last until um, World War II. So uh, Sarah lastly mentions that the New Deal did not conquer unemployment, and I agree, but it did decrease as the Great Depression ended, making one of her sources biased. Um, Sarah's source was Professor Dan Holtz, as he mentioned, that the decade ended in 1939 with a 20.7% unemployment rate, but I found various credible sites that say that um, it ended at 17.2% in 1939. Um, one of the credible sites was the United States Census Bureau. So my last response to her claim three is that FDR devalued the dollar by confiscating the U.S. citizen gold. So um, yes, he did value he did devalue the dollar by getting rid of the gold standard, but it did help in the long run. Sarah states that FDR confiscated gold from the U.S. citizens, which was exchanged for 20.67 an ounce. He then raised the gold price to 35 per ounce, cutting the dollar by 40 percent. But according to Amadeo from Balance, from the Balance, the U.S. increases gold reserves reserves from 4. Point million to 7. Point million. By 1944, the exchange value for all currencies were set back to gold. The United States held the most gold in the world, which countries simply pegged the value of the currency to the dollar instead of the gold. Um, since every country wanted the gold or wanted to um, value the gold for the U.S. dollars, um, it increased the dollar value and it boosted the economic growth. So, although Sarah has very excellent points on. Um, on why uh, FDR didn't or failed to effectively end the Great Depression, 
I feel, um, well, there are some evidence that show that her information is inadequate and some of her, one of her bias is, uh, or one of her sources is bias. Thank you. No, thank you. No, because I, that's why I took them off, because I have, I have, yeah, I can't say some stuff, right? And I think that would have been, like, bad to say that. Yeah. Because she shows Yeah. Yeah, I had braces before, and I lost my braces, so I, I got, I was going out for, like, five days. All right, Elizabeth, you did a uh, very nice job keeping things organized and following the structure of the advocate. That's also kind of on the advocate for having uh, clear claims that makes it easy to follow. Uh, you don't dispute things that are true, but you do talk about the uh, ramifications of those things that happened and what the long-term outcome is going to be or how it affected things. On the first point, uh, your argument basically seems to be that, well, yeah, they did raise taxes, but it didn't have a negative effect on businesses since all the rich people avoided paying those taxes, uh, which also suggests that the money that was used for those other public <laughs> works programs ended up coming from someplace else. Um, and I think there probably might be some issue as to whether or not that was uh, beneficial or negative in the long run. That's that it's not going to get discussed because basically your answer seems to be that it wouldn't have hurt these people in the long run. Um, the, the argument about the New Deal I think is a little bit more effective because you talk about uh, benefits from the New Deal that were largely ignored by the uh, advocate uh, including uh, public benefits like uh, the public works and uh, Social Security. Uh, the benefits of the public works, for instance, need to be highlighted. Uh, building construction, uh, colleges and universities, highways, uh, electrical um, utilities, you know, that sort of thing. Some examples to show that in the long run, even though people maybe only had a job for six months while they were building a electrical power plant, that thousands of people got jobs because there's now electricity available that was built by those short-term kinds of things. So you need to kind of look and see what the long-range implication of some of those things were. You're not denying that maybe the job that some people had was a short-term one, but what they were doing was building a long-term uh, framework, for example. I think that's probably the way that argument would work best. <coughs> I did like your answer uh, in the middle there where you, in essence, said, well, there was an economic crash and we were having problems, but after each of the uh, New Deal proposals went into play, uh, we had growth in the economy, and even if it's not on the employment issues, we had growth in the economy of 10% and 8.9% and 12%, <laughs> which I think is a uh, responsive counterclaim to the issue that the advocate's talking about. It doesn't necessarily address the employment issue, but it does tend to put it into a context about how much worse things could have been, for instance. And I think that might be another way to look at it. Uh, your argument that the uh, advocate's source is biased, it doesn't sound like you're suggesting that they're biased. You're not saying that they um, are looking at this from a political perspective, that they're making some money off of this. You're basically saying they're wrong. And there's nothing wrong with saying something's wrong. Say they reported that it was 27%, but according to the uh, census and uh, the Department of Commerce at the time, the unemployment rate was you know, 17%, so it was substantially lower than what the advocates' uh, evidence said. That evidence is not as nearly as reliable as the government statistics from the time, so we ought to be trusting those things. And, of course, we knew that uh, there were declines over the long term, uh, and we could see that because of the other things that are going on. <laughs> Uh, on the uh, dollar devaluing argument, uh, you, you don't want to deny what's true, so the actions that Roosevelt took, the, they're not deniable, but the question is, 
uh, did it have negative consequences to people or to the economy? You, in essence, suggested in the long run it had a substantial advantage. This is kind of like the argument that I was saying up above where when you show that we had these short-term jobs, so you get long-term benefits from it. I think the same argument applies here. This action may have had some short-term negative consequences, but in the long run, it strengthened the economy because the dollar became the standard by which other currencies are met, and that became a, uh, an economic boom to the country, and, and I think that that's a, a pretty good answer on that. Okay, thank you.